Hey guys, and welcome back to Trek Yards. I'm Captain Foley. I'm Connor Cockins. Yeah, we're going to be talking about Discovery Episode 11, Perpetual Infinity, today. And yeah, yeah actually, really in, I really enjoyed this episode, to be fair. I, I don't know how to feel about it. I still don't. I was interested to see where you would lie, because uh, I don't know, honestly. And I this is the first episode of the season that I went back and rewatched most of it again straight away. This morning, luckily it all fit in time-wise, I woke up earlier, but I rewatched it again to just try and get in the information they're telling us. Because there's so much little line, little bits. I, I think my summary is, I like the episode, I like the acting, but there's more plot holes in it than probably any episode of Discovery. But the episode's good. It's just really poorly thought out plot holes. And it's like, oh, which would, But the episode's pretty good. So it's like, hmm. Why do you like it? That's just Why a... do I like it? Because I wasn't bored as I expected to be. I mean, even on second viewing, there's a whole section in the middle where it's blah, 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 blah. Hi, mom. Hi. And, you know, blah, blah, blah. We're doing this, whatever. I didn't take any notes because there was nothing really important or relevant. So I was like, am I missing the point here? Is this, should this be boring? Because there's a lot of talking that doesn't require notes. Therefore, is it important? It kind of is. I, I don't know. I kind of liked the. I liked a lot about this episode, but I I didn't see the plot holes maybe that you're talking about because I didn't see too many. Um, so I'd be interested to hear your take on it. Yeah, no, I, I it wasn't boring because we've gone past all of the filler, or the build up the, the the build up plus stuff. Now everything in here was very like A to B to C to D to E to F to. It's very focused. There's very little anything else. And even they're trying to juggle so many little character story beats, you know. But I like the episode. But it's just like, it gives me more more worry for the f future. Because we keep saying if the payoff isn't good, the season will fall down. Well, I will say that the, the one thing that I, I appreciated a lot was that the red signals weren't from her. That deepened the entire season drastically. Because we asked those questions, why, how, who? So that being another question is like, oh, nice curveball. Yeah, she's like, I don't, I don't know anything about them. But the way she said it, when I went back and watched it the second time, it's like, do you really not know, or are you just saying that you don't know? Because she said, she said it so cavalierly, like she wasn't surprised. She's just like, yeah, I don't know what you're talking about. So let's move along. So, is there still something un li underneath that that we don't know about yet? I don't know. My so interpretation was that, I mean, she she's a very interesting character. We'll get to her in a minute because uh, this is a, con it's a condensed review, but so much to get through. I got from that performance that, shut up, that's not me, move on, we've got an hour to talk, get on with it. Because she sees the grand scope. Let's uh, jump down, I guess, then to the, 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 the mother Red Angel plot, which is pretty well brought to life. What did you think? Yeah, I, I thought it was actually great. Um, I love seeing her mission logs, especially that first one where she's like, I'm going to jump back an hour before they arrive so that I can get us, give us warning. Um, and then all of a sudden she's 950 years in the future. And then she's like stuck there. She's tethered there. She always jumps back to that, which answered one of our questions about Terralisium and uh, New Eden, because she brought that church there to take it out of the controls timeline thing, so that control doesn't know about it. So she has a place to live. Nine hundred and fifty years in the future. That's her home base. I was. I didn't hear that the first time around that that was Terralisium, but she said that ta that was her test to see if time could be just changed if it was fluid. But the fact that if she created a, a brand new colony on this planet, either it does or and she, there's no technology on this planet. So therefore, the society either didn't progress far enough and killed itself before it got to her time, in which case there's like fractured stuff that's hundreds of years old. Or she went back to her own future timeline, but she is altering the timeline in the middle. So when she goes back to the future, she's like, oh, nothing's changed, but I did change it. So what's like... The timeline is fluid because I'm still existing in this. Or she's going, like it creates these interesting time. Like they really um, jumbled the idea of time travel in this episode to the point that I want to do an episode with you next week saying Discovery is not Prime or JJ or Kelvin. It's unique. It's fluid. Because she says in a, in a line, I've seen you die, Michael, a hundred times. I'll see you die a hundred more. Which means if she's changing the timeline, here, 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 here then none of the timelines we see, it, none of it's the original timeline because we haven't, she's changing it every place constantly. This is not, this is a fluid, this is something unique. This isn't just 
time. This is the discovery weird Red Angel altering time. Because if there's one character can change it a hundred times, you know, and several of them we've seen sort of, then no, this is a fluid reality where it's not prime. It's not, it's just, it's unique. It's very hard to comprehend. It still has the question of, is this that we're watching an altered timeline because Michael was supposed to die as a child? Several, several um, times. I mean, <laughs> and the orb is completely a, a time change. So they didn't find the orb in t and that, everything's changing. That's the thing. Every, everything is being altered weirdly, organically. It's weird, Stuart. It's weird. <laughs> and they even, yeah, and well, they even mentioned there's a line where she says um, the future is still not yep. sure. We can still change things. So there's still hope that things are yep. going to kind of set themselves right. Said, also, she said that the AI is being, because of the way time gravity, like literally, that's what they were saying. Time line has gravity, is pulling the AI closer. And that means literally that the creation of the thing that kills the future is no longer in the 2600s or 2500s. It is now closer because it managed to get through one of my time rips. It's infected control. That's become sentient early. It's got half the data. You've now changed because, you know, the original control didn't find the data. It didn't even know the data existed for God knows how many years because the, the orb didn't die when it died because that was died because of reasons that she did. She caused it, gravity, which caused, caused it to die. So when did it find its data? What, in the 24th century, 25th century? So it's now sped up the idea of this AI taking control, 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 hundreds of years. And so, yeah, she's she's basically forced this this massive new divergence point, uh, which, yes, the, the timeline that she lives in the future is still relatively the same because control always destroys everything whenever it is. You know, whenever it starts, it destroys all life. But now that's come massively forward, which is even more scary. It is weird. Well, it always gets weird when we talk about time, right? I, I so They are going very weird with it. And the numbers were interesting to me. She goes 950 years in the future. And we know from Calypso that the, enter or the Enterprise, the Discovery is t waiting for a thousand years for something. The, the crew's abandoned it, said, well, Discovery needs to wait here. We'll be back thousand years and then she goes 950 years so there's some kind of convergence going on between the show and the short calypso which is great like i it was a great standalone piece but the way they're tying it together i'm looking forward to seeing how that pans out um because i thought that was a continuity error with itself because we know the ai kills everything in the 2750s and that's when a probe comes through and changes the thing because of the Red Angel, because of, of Michael's mum, creating a time breach with that time, I guess. So that's already been 200 years of it's destroyed everything. So she's so the, the mum lives in a post-destroyed, long-term destroyed timeline that, like, long since gone, which is why she feels more safe, because it didn't just happen. It's not just about to happen. It's happened for hundreds of years. But yes, yeah, so we're now creating new... I was very surprised to have her push that far in the future. Although I want to ask you a question that I don't think has been answered, or I think it links to mud, but again, I'm not. Why is she tethered to the future? That I, I w wasn't able to figure out. Because <laughs> her first jump, she was supposed to go an hour backwards. She went 950 <laughs> years forward. Whether that was because the Klingons were shooting at her and her disruptor blast hit the suit as it was moving. Um, but yeah, why she's tethered there and keeps jumping back there, I'm not 100% clear on. And even with the... Even with the suit having destroyed its time travel ability, it what generates the field to bring it back then? Like, what exactly. is pulling her back? It is not the suit. The suit is destroyed. Time-wise ability. They, they kept throwing out tethered to the future. It's like, what does that mean? Did it tether itself? It tethered itself. But then they can beam her out of the tether. So it seems like a very... They, I don't think they know what that means. We see the time crystal get destroyed on the suit. Uh, which means the suit, once it goes back to the future, 950 years, it cannot come back because she doesn't have a time crystal. Uh, they, they make a point of saying that. Um, just the whole, yeah, the thing getting pulled back. It's it's from an artificially created wormhole somehow. But what is, cre what is operating that? And how is it that the suit can... And then the second later, she can go without the suit on. <laughs> and how can she survive that? Uh, I don't. I, I don't. I, I thought. I thought I'd rip her open and kill her. I was like, this is not safe. Otherwise, she doesn't need a suit. Yeah. The only thing I can think of is that the quantum signature of her 
existence it revolves around that time frame, so it automatically pulls them back each time, like a like a rubber band, right? Something must have happened in that first jump that created that. There, hopefully, there will be answers to that. I hope it's not one of those open ended <laughs> plot holes. Um, and if if they do their job correctly, it, there's probably a, a good explanation for that. But I don't know. But her being, I'm guessing her being tethered is the same as Mud because if you think about what Mud was doing. He was tethering himself to a certain point of reset and then traveling back in time to that point. So actually I'm thinking that I think we found the limitation of this technology. It's not a time travel, although it, it is, it's not a time travel suit per se. It's a looping suit. She's just looping the past. He was looping the future. Because then, because it, it, it added a straight limit, like she wasn't creating the tether because we always assumed to make sure I get back to the important moment. And it's like, oh, shit, she's just she's locked there, you know? Yeah, see, these time crystals, we haven't got much explanation for them. It could be that... <laughs> well, they're time crystals, so... When they're created, maybe they travel back in time to a certain point, and then when they get used, they can loop back to the time they were created or something. Yeah, so I don't know if it's related to the size of the time crystal, because we know Harry Mudge was quite small, and it was a short time loop. Hers on the back seemed like a large chunk of rock, um, which could account for the, the amount of time that it can jump or loop. Um, it's really hard to say. We, there's no, There has been no good explanation for the time crystals. Uh, they were kind of mentioned in the Harry Mud one as just a one-off, like, yep, yeah, it's time crystal, yay. <laughs> uh, but now they, they've got to kind of answer some questions about those, considering how important they play a part they play in this with the suit. So whether they'll do that or not, I, I don't. Let's talk about Leland now for a second. Um I was right. He wasn't dead. Um, the question I had is, who tied him to the the platform? Yeah, I'm sure Control couldn't do it with a hologram. But it, Stuart, everyone has drones, flying mega mega drones. Oh, yes, yes, and and things that are so advanced. It's I mean it's laughable. It really is. I mean TNG is not even. I mean this stuff's post nemesis tech. Not even not even questioning that. You know. But I think the fact that we saw the thing that injected him was a similar thing that lifted him, put a chair there, tied him mm. to it, desedated him. Good explanation. <laughs> sure. So we get an uh, explanation of the holograms and how Vulcans are easier to impersonate because Vulcans are just stone-faced dicks. So the computer is good with that. Um, but it has more trouble with flesh. And this is where we get uh, a, a call out for how many ships are in this, in Starfleet. 7,000 active Starfleet vessels. That's a lot of ships for TOS time, in my opinion. Somebody asked us on a live the other day, how many, how many ships you think are in the fleet? We couldn't answer. We didn't know. Now we got 7,000, which it could be all civilians, tugs, garbage scows, top of the line ships. It could be all civilian. I don't know. Pre TOS and without enough time post war for the rebuild. So they're now hurriedly building new ships after they lost a third of their fleet. So their, their fleet was like over 12,000 ships. They lost a third of it. Again, like you say, it could be including the freighters and stuff. Um, but was, yeah, we've got a number, I guess. But they you'd accept, ex expect a massive expansion in the next like 10 years for TOS. So there's even more ships. And yet, Stuart and TMP were the only ship in the area with over 10,000 ships. Only ship in the quadrant. We have we have 4,000 ships in the beta quadrant, 6,000 in the beta quadrant, and... Well, yeah, when you look at it like that, but that's another that's a topic for another day, for sure. Um, now, I know we're going to hear a lot of talk and a lot of complaining about the B word, uh, the Borg, coming into this because of the nanoprobes that were injected into Leland, and they had green lights on them. So people are already freaking out. Oh, the Borg, it's the Borg. It's not necessarily the Borg. Nanotech is all... We almost have nanotech now. They're working on nanotech currently in real life. So it's not too much of a stretch to just say that it's just nanotech. If it ties in with the Borg, I'm going to be totally annoyed and pissed off. It should have nothing to do with them at all. <laughs> Zero validity in any Borg. Um, like I said, there's no validity in Michael Burnham being the Red Angel. Uh, so guys, trust me, the Borg around 800 years before Voyager. They specifically said that in the Delta Quadrant. So the Borg have been existent for like 500 years in another quadrant. So there's nothing about the origins of the Borg. But they've time travel's involved. Time travel's involved. So nothing, anything can happen. 
if Leland takes control of the well, suit somehow. Wouldn't and that be depressing if it a would. future Section 31 in an alternate pre-TOS timeline got got a time travel suit based on time tech from an alternate fourth dimensional race in uh, after a time war, sort of, then sent nanoprobes back into the past in a different quadrant to then become the Borg in a new timeline. It's like, no. But Enterprise still exists in this timeline, so they still talk to... No, I mean that's the the fact is it because that's one of the one of the, one of the plot holes is that um, if control needs the AI the the data from the sphere to be sentient, but look, it's sentient now. It's a, it's it's doing everything plot wise itself. What more does it need? It's also managed to take over a human body with new AI tech, which certainly doesn't exist at that time. Which means it's using information from its because remember, the future control sent a program back into the past, which means it had knowledge inside of that. It could have told itself how to create certain technologies. I mean, I mean, they, they would send this trillions of data from the sphere wirelessly from planet to surface in minutes. So I, I don't imagine in the future they can't send, you know, all the plans for all the tech to its past self. So um, the control's already sentient. It's already alive. It's already doing its own thing. And so I'm sure it used future versions of its own nanotech based on its future tech to do that to him because that's completely out of the realms of what they can do in pre-TOS. Even Section 31, it's absolutely absurd. So I give no credit for that at all. And then it's just their future ultra tech. I mean, and even if they had nanoprobes of some form, it's just, in you know, incorporating a, um, uh, you know, a neural net into... I mean, Quantarium was a, you know, a, a human turned into an android-esque. So why couldn't they use similar more advanced versions of that to put a bio chip in his brain to then link to the computer. Um, although I love that they're, they're shooting him as if he's control. It's like, no, the ship, the ship's computer is control. Killing him means nothing. And I kind of got a Terminator vibe. It's almost like uh, John Connor from Terminator Genesis kind of vibe from from Leland. Yeah. It's, it's like, I'm, I'm not sure a computer... Uh, control is still necessarily all in the computer. I think he, they, they transferred a lot of itself to Leland or was using him as a flesh puppet of some kind. Um, I don't know how that worked exactly because he was getting shot and f fixing himself with the nanotech. Because um, you can just copy your own data. It's a computer program. You make copies, so you wouldn't put all of your data in one place. True. A, a, a flesh body that got, you know, like I say, shot by like several shots of kill which normally burned through a body, but did nothing? Why weren't they using Disintegrate? Yeah? Why weren't they all shooting his face? I did like the Leland stuff. It was a, a well-paced, well-acted, gives him another cool part, very predictable, but well done. I like we saw his pre, pre-bit pre with the AI. That was fun. I thought they'd jump into, is he real? Like, it'll be another reveal, despite obvious. Like, it, oh, he's acting weird now. Is he taking over? It's like, no, no, just... just I do, I've always liked Leland, his character, the actor. I think he's an a interesting character. Um, it's kind of a shame that this has happened to him, but whatever. That being said, this episode made me appreciate Giorgio a lot more. I'm actually starting to like her character with the way they changed her up. And there's some hints there from Burnham's mother that uh, she sacrifices herself for Burnham at some point. And she's like, I think you're mistaking me for the other one. He's like, no, I know exactly who you are. It'll be you'd be surprised what you can do when for the people you love. Although since she saw Burnham die a hundred times, how does she know that which timeline she's in? <laughs> where she's hacked? like she's just it's more of a well a couple of times you did do that. You know what I mean? You can't take any of those sorts of things serious when she's seen all these alternate realities of of changing the future. You know what I mean? As, and that was one thing she said right right at the start was that time is relative from your perspective. So the timeline we're seeing is not is not what we're going to end up with. Because it's not about them. It's about Michael Burnham's mother and the time suit and what that influence is doing. Like, I was actually expecting, um, uh, and it's happened in a few things, actually in Continuum was a really great plot twist, when when uh, Tyler got stabbed, Tyler Vock, I expected him to die. When, they, when he'd been on the planet, I was expecting him to shoot everyone. Like, when Burnham got hit by the shield impact, I was expecting her to die. And then Burnham's mother, have, or, or Burnham jump into the suit and go back and then erase the entire last ten episodes. In the sense, because that I felt like it was building to that you know epic pace of times linear from the perspective of the person. Michael Burns' mum gets shot. Michael Burns has to go into the suit, and she becomes a red angel because of necessity. Now she's trapped in this loop, and then but because she's got a different perspective of life, 
she gets to redo time, and now she's always lost forever, but she has to change her own timeline. Like, I, I thought that was, it was building, I was expecting, you know, epic deaths with epic time erasing, which then can fix the timeline. That's what, I thought it felt very natural to that. You just stole all my thunder, because I was going to say that. I still think that's a possibility, because it is mentioned that the suit is DNA strand encoded, so that Giorgio couldn't use it. And at they start the episode saying, the mitochondrial DNA between mother and daughter is very similar, and blah, blah, blah. So it's like, it's the writing's on the wall. The foreshadowing is there for Michael to still don that suit, even if it's to save her mother. I can see Michael saving her mother and then being stuck in time herself or destroying the time suit in the future to, to get rid of all the information. I don't know. Something about that's going to happen, and then Michael is going to don that suit at some point. I've called that for a while now. I still maintain that's going to happen. Because so. actually, actually, I love that. Because now we know what happened. If, because the whole thing is about Michael Burnham, and now it even more is, right? For better or for worse. What is a more happy ending than Michael Burnham's parents not dying and her lead a normal life? So if you got to the point, and because uh, um, we'll give you a little spoiler, uh, as Kurtzman said, things are about to get sh shaken up, with the implication that they're going to change the, the flow of the show drastically. So I wouldn't be surprised now if, you know, they know we're getting two seasons and a sort of a third. We're going to re we're gonna undo everything, which is good. But the journey is from Michael Burnham being who she is, evolving, losing, and, and going back and able to save her family and save the timeline. Because if the time suit doesn't exist, then blah, blah, blah. Like, there's probably some connection with the time suit and control. You know, they did also call out, weirdly, that the time suit has infinite computing power. Which, if you can invent yeah. in pre-TOS, makes the M5 look like a... You know what I mean? <laughs> like so a perha perhaps the quantum computer is what creates control because it's able to use that technology to evolve itself quicker because it's unlimited storage. And so, yeah, if, if she can go back... If Michael can go back and save her mum and undo the time suit thing, then all of the time suits events will stop. Which will be all the small changes will stop. But because Michael mum will be alive, she won't have to die. Michael won't die. Change the entire timeline... Because the suit isn't created, you haven't got unlimited quantum power tech because it's a failed experiment, mm -hmm. and then you uh, but reset for season three with a new, you know, a new discovery, new enterprise, blah blah blah. blah. Everyone's happy, and you've created a nice resolution for the character. She saves her family. Reset timeline. That would be awesome, actually. It would. It wouldn't feel wasted because you could still see all the characters again. I can still see it developing into the Borg, though. Sadly. Um, with Michael Burnham in the suit in the future with all this information from this orb and you can't contain all that information within one suit, whatever, so it needs to expand and it merges Burnham and the suit together to become like a cyborg and then that starts branching out to get to spread this knowledge just out of this one area, like this one suit. I can see them doing something stupid like that and I hope they don't. But anyway, we're kind of getting off on different tangents here. As for the episode itself, <laughs> um, a lot of great, a lot of great storytelling. I wasn't bored. I, it was it was well paced. Um, there were some great moments. I love seeing her family uh, when they were when she was a kid. That was that was great. Um, and her her conversations with her mother were really good. The fact that her mother didn't want to see her at one point, and how that hurt her. That was awesome. Um, and then it all it all worked out. Her mother got sucked back through the future, and uh, all worked out. <laughs> <laughs> well, kind of yeah. maybe, mm. but you know what I mean. It's yeah. Like I said in my first re reaction trailer last or my first reaction video last night, I'm giving this a seven and a half, possibly even an eight out of ten, because I really did enjoy it more than I thought I would. There were a lot of unanswered questions, of course, but. Uh, I, I enjoyed Leland's part. I, uh, Giorgio, I'm, I'm any any episode that can make me like Giorgio after the amount of dislike I've had for her character, even from the beginning, got to give them credit for that. So I'm giving this a good. I don't know if I want to stuck with seven point five or eight. Seven point seven five. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, fair. Out of 10. Although, although to reiterate, this is not the Giorgio we were shown in season one, Mary Universe. I mean, they've completely. You know what I mean? It, this episode was even more caring, personal, human. You know what I mean? It's so like they're deconstructing her. They thought, ah, that was that was Brian Fuller. Gotta bad. make her likable. I don't think anybody her like liked her. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll go into a couple of quick plot holy things. Just far off. I won't say more because that's for the full episode. 
we'll break it down. Uh, one funny thing that I noticed was, you know, with no power to 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 stop the suit from traveling back in time, he's a power of supernova. Oh, use dark matter. Okay, do you remember last episode when they said we need the power of sixteen warp cores? We've nothing to generate that much. Oh, let's use the ionic atmosphere of the planet, or the dark matter you apparently have. Still, and what? Yeah. And you've got that from the asteroid. What are you on about? I thought they might like another. Like they forgot they had power needs last week, and another infinite power this week. Okay, bizarre. That's a plot hole. Like I said, the tethering is a plot hole. Just I, well, I, there's, it's a plot hole till it's explained. It's a plot oh. hole till it's explained, and that well, that wormhole thing could still be explained for sure. No, I I agree. That's that's why it's one of those things. This is a this is a still a part of the journey. Um, and obviously, you know, the Klingons we saw at the start had no hair. That was another plot hole because they're pre-war Klingons. So they should have had hair. They should have respected their own new continuity. That was a dumb mistake because you could have had like just a small thing, but you're making another point to show the wrong Klingons. Weird. Um, so I'm going to give this a... This is, this is the problem because as an episode, I enjoyed it quite a lot. Maybe like a six. Like a gentle enjoy. Maybe a seven. Plot hole filled. Now I think we'll get into them to tonight. Like a three and a half, because they 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 they're, they're concept breaking. That said, if they're explained and paid off, it'll jump massively. It's because there's so many small like doesn't make sense problems that the episode just does not work currently. So that's that's the that's the proviso. It's like a three if you take it as a as a now. F uh, what is it? Six as like an actual episode of TV. It's pretty good, but it's so fast. That you can't think about, so I'd watch it twice to try absorb it all because there's so much so fast that it doesn't let you actually think about it, which is a classic J. J. Abrams classic. You know, the plot doesn't make sense. We'll keep going. Like, so the energy problem, they completely skirt past that despite being a massive problem last week, and they like the dumb, very, very dumb. But if it's all paid off, I think we have a very strong episode. <laughs> very strong if though, you know? So I, I can't feel about it until we see the end of the season. <laughs> Which I haven't had before, you know. But and I will say one my last note is that the acting has always been good this season. We we complain about plot things because that's the the fundamentals, but the acting has been good by everybody pretty much the entire season. Discovery is a solidly acted show. It, other things that are problems that bring it down, but the acting has always been good. At least for this season, I mean, like. Well, that's it, guys. If you want to check out our actual full length live review with you guys check that out today at, East, at five eastern standard time uh we love breaking these this episode down scene by scene we have notes we've got detailed uh things and i'm sure we're gonna have other videos coming out talking about different things because there's a bunch to talk about for this one for sure um but uh, anyway, looking forward to your comments and what you guys thought of this episode down below please give it a ranking out of 10 love to see those as well and um you know hit the do the standard things like like our video subscribe to our channel click the notification icon because we love making content like this for you and there's a lot of new stuff coming up with the end of discovery the picard show series eventually lots to lots to talk about so if you want to get notified when we're uploading please click that notification bell icon and just if you can financially support us then patreon's a great way join our super chats every single week and one time donation at paypal.com all the classic stuff but it is important and the teespring store buy merchandise uh, any well, have a look. It's in the link down below, and buying stuff does help us. And come on, you're gonna look awesome with our faces on your chest. Come on, be serious. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So until next time, which is probably later today. Hopefully, if you're watching this, you're gonna tune into the live. Um, but anyway, till next time, when you see our smiling, awesome faces, I'm Captain Foley. I'm Connor Cockings. <laughs> see you later, guys. Bye.